All right, so let me say a little bit about how to um, do error analysis of a numerical method for the solution of uh, initial value problems. Okay, so it's broken down into sort of um, two parts. Um, the first of it has, which has to do with this notion of local error. So the local error is a comparison between um, of the uh, Taylor series of the true solution um, and the numerical approximation. So put another way, um, the basic idea is that if you have the same initial condition and you um, flow the uh, solution by uh, time h, it's like by the exact solution flow, uh, versus taking one step of your numerical method, um, what is the error it's like you make? It's like in that single step. Okay, so this is why it's called the local error. Um, and, and typically it's like you try to measure um, the error by thinking a bit as an asymptotic expansion um, in the time step and seeing it's like what the leading error term is it's like as some power of the step size okay so this is this idea of local error and then um, the second thing then is this idea of global error and what we mean when you say that is that it's the accumulated error during the computation of a trajectory. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, again, the idea, if you will, is the following. If this is time and this is, uh, say, y, and you start with some initial time t0, at some initial value uh, y0, right? And this curve, say, is the exact solution. Um, you could compare that to one step of, say, the Euler method, right? Okay. And this is going to be t0 plus h, right? And you know that this thing is going to be um, if it was the Euler method, for example, this would be y0 plus h times. Let me just <coughs> write it as um, y0 plus h times f evaluated at uh, t0, y0. Okay? And then this thing here is uh, y at t0 plus h, which is the exact solution. And you're measuring this error here. That's what I call the local error. Just what happens, it's like after a single step of the numerical method. And then uh, you might compare that to the error at the final time. Let's call that Tn. OK. Um, and if you recall, T0 was uh, A for um, the Euler method, and Tn maybe is the B. Right, so you're trying to integrate from some initial time A to some final time B. Um, and, um, and then, you know, maybe that other point there is the true error, and you're comparing the error at the final time. That's what we refer to as the global error. So the local error, again, is the error after m making one step of the method, and the global error is the accumulated error. It's like after you, ent uh, you integrate the solution all the way up to the final time which you care about. Okay, all right. So, <coughs> so again, it's like um, with the Euler method, if you plot Um, the solutions to the ODE, um, y prime is equal to f of ty, right, corresponding 
to different uh, initial values. Y at T zero. Then the Euler method, uh, then Euler's method. be fought off as moving from one solution curve to another solution curve. along a tangent uh, to the curve. Okay. Um, so what I mean is the following. So as I've already shown in this picture, the idea is that you have a solution curve here, y of t, which goes through some initial value. Right, and you've taken a step of the Euler method, which corresponds to taking a step along the tangent line to that curve to this new point. This new point uh, is what I call y1. Okay, and true to point y1 is uh, some other solution curve uh, which goes through that point. Right, and so once you get there, then you take another step uh, along the tangent to this new solution curve to give you y2. Okay, so that's uh, sort of the intuition, if you will. It's like behind this method. Um, yeah, so the, the picture is maybe not drawn that great, but the idea again is that this first uh, step of the Euler method is supposed to be tangent to the initial curve here. Okay, all right. Okay, so again, uh, we use this idea of local error to um, give to denote the difference between uh, the um, exact solution it's like um, compared to one step of the numerical method. Okay, so let's uh, let's see this right. So for Euler's method, so we use the term. Yeah, let me just state that local error. for the difference between the exact and approximate solutions. For a step size, well, let me call it time step. There are various ways of referring to it. Uh, sometimes it's called step size, sometimes it's called time step. Let me just put time step h. Okay, so for Euler, Euler's method, <coughs> right, the local error is equal to the difference between y at tn plus 1 minus y, um, y n plus 1. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, expand this term, which is the exact solution, as a Taylor series about the time tn, right? And I'm going to compare it to the expression which I get uh, for the Euler method. Okay. So this is equal to y at tn. Okay, maybe let's call it k. Uh, Let's call it TK, TK, okay. Okay, Y at TK plus H times F at TK, YK, sorry, Y at TK, okay, plus uh, H squared over 2, Y double prime at some unknown point, because CK, all right? So that's the ex Taylor expansion for Y at TK plus 1 expanded about the point uh, tk y at tk. Okay, 
and you compare it to the numerical method, to the Euler method applied to this. So this is minus yk minus hf at tk yk. All right. And then you have the absolute value sign. Okay. So. Um, and. Um, Right, and, and the point with the local error is that you assume that y at tk is equal to yk, right? For the local error, right, you assume that the initial data uh, agrees with each other, that so y at tk is yk. So this gives you uh, yk plus h f tk yk right plus h squared over 2 y double prime at ck right so this is again the taylor expansion term but i've used the fact that now y at tk is equal to yk okay and then you subtract yk minus hf tk yk right so those terms cancel those first two terms cancel with the last two terms you're left with this second order term right so this is big o of h squared. Okay, so this is telling you that for the Taylor method, the local error you make, and the local error again is what happens if you start off at the same initial data and you take one step of the exact flow. Um, so you forward, you basically propagate the solution forward, it's like by the exact flow by a step size h. Compare that to, um, you know, propagating the initial data um, by one step of the numerical method, again with time step h. And you look at the difference of that. And, um, and again, in order to do that, you have to make, you have to develop an expression for the solution at the new time in terms of the solution at the old time. Um, and since in general you don't know how to do that, it's like what you typically do is you replace that with some sort of Taylor expansion. And then you compare it again with the other, uh, with the actual method. Uh, and you'll see that the difference of this um, is some is going to be dominated by basically some power of h. Okay, all right. So, um, all right. So, so that and we see that for the Euler method, the local truncation error is big O of h squared. Okay. So more generally, if the local error is some big O of h to the p plus 1, right, we're going to call p, p is the order of the method. Okay, so in particular, we have Euler's method. So Euler's method, right, is first order. say that p is equal to 1. Okay? All right. Um, and, and we'll see in a little bit why it is that, um, you know, the local error being big O of h to the p plus 1 says that the method is order p. And the basic idea behind it is that typically, um, again, it's like in the example we talked about, you don't really care about what error you're making in just one step of the method. You care about the solution, say, at the final time, and you want to measure it's like how fast, you know, it's like that error in the final solution changes as a function of the step size h, okay? And, um, and so in general, what happens is that um, the error you make, right, at that final step uh, is going to, if you have a local error of big O of h to the p plus one, the final error is going to be big O of h to the p. And that's the reason why, um, you know, we, when you have a local error, when you have a local error big O h to the p plus one, the global error is typically going to be big O h to the p, and that's why uh, we call p. It's like the order of the method because it, it tells you how the global error is behaving as a function of the step size. Okay. All right. Um, 
one way to sort of see this intuitively, um, there is the following, that if you, if you have some interval, say, from A to B, right, recall that H is going to be something like B minus A over um, the number of steps. So let's call that N, right? And um, so if you have one step, if one step of the method has an error which is big O of H to the P plus 1, right, then you're going to have to take a lot of steps, right, which scale like, um, so you care about the number of steps, so N is going to be B minus A over H, right, which means that N itself is big O of 1 over H, okay? So, uh, so if you have N times the local error, which is the error per step, right, then this is going to be big O of H to the P, okay? So you have to be a bit careful because this is actually a, a typically a, um, you know, it's like understatement of the error you make because there's, there's an additional source of error. It's like when you sort of, after you've taken one step, because the local error, again, it's like it's based on the idea that there, uh, you start with the correct initial data and then you take one step of the numerical method versus taking one step of the exact solution. But once you're at this point uh, T1, the uh, initial data is incorrect, right? Because you're using the um, prediction, it's like from one step of the Euler method as your initial data at time T1. So there's an additional source of error there which you have to account for. But again, naively, if you just sort of, you know, sum up the local errors, right, you're going to have, again, something which scales like big O of H to the P. Uh, and, and again, that's the reason why local error of big O of H to the P plus 1, uh, you know, ref is referred to as a method of order P because it's global error then will be big O of H to the P, okay? Um, but again, this, this, this is, uh, you know, this is a naive statement which is, um, you know, not totally accurate because you have this, um, you have this error now in the initial condition which you have to worry about. So we'll talk a little bit, it's like in the next lecture about how you actually deal with the fact that after taking one step there's an error in the initial data, okay, uh, and, and how to take into account it's like the contribution of that error, okay. But, but for now it's like that gives you sort of a rough overview of how you know, one might go about uh, doing error analysis and in particular study the local and global error of your numerical method.